<laughs> technology always. Oh, all the time. It's so always technology. If you are uh, rejoining us, we apologize for <laughs> some of the um, the technical audio issues, and it's very hard to hear from this point because we we can't hear. <laughs> I know we can't on. hear ourselves. So we yeah. uh, okay. So we appreciate you guys leaving comments about whether you can hear us or not, or if the audio is any better. Because we can't hear ourselves as we're doing this right now. So. De definitely. So, so we hope that this is this yeah. is working. <laughs> so feel free to leave a comment for us about whether those of you that are watching, um, feel free to leave a comment about whether or not the audio improved now or not. Thumbs okay. up or thumbs down, right? There we go. <laughs> Thank you. We'll watch for it. In the meantime, I'll catch you guys up on where I was. All right. Yes, which, which where we were talking about um, some of the goals, which you went over two mm -hmm. of the goals that we have um, institutionally. Yes. Through our strategic goals, and then reopening the campus. Yes. Um, post COVID. Yes. Um, which is just wonderful. You know, we're not really going back to our old normal. Mm -hmm. we're, we're starting a new normal. Yeah. And it, change can be hard, but it can also it can be really be. good at the same time. It can be, and I mm -hmm. think that I think part of the what happens when we talk about creating a robust campus presence again, part of it is what I talked about about us having more classes that are face to face, mm -hmm. letting our students know that we're doing everything that we can to really help them meet their educational goals, including having more um, classes face to face. Um, I I agree with you though. I think that that it is us building something new mm -hmm. and different because coming out of the pandemic, it's not business as usual. It's it and it and it can't be because there's so much that we still need to take care of because the pandemic is still ongoing. Right? It's mm -hmm. not something that's over and done. And so because of that. I think that we just need to think differently. Um, and I think at DACC, we are thinking differently about it, which is why President Torres um, is really leading this initiative for us to see how we create and craft the next iteration of the college. Um, I think that's why she's inviting all of us to um, give our input about what that should and could look like um, in the future is because it's not going to be campus as usual or, or college as usual. It's college unusual now yeah. <laughs> because we're in a place where we're getting to create something in a way that we've never had to do before. And so it's a very... Um, it's a very exciting um, environment, I'd say, here at DACC right now, because we are in creation mode. Mm -hmm. We're creating and crafting a new college, um, and Dr. Torres is leading us uh, right through the process for us to create that. So that's very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. They had, we had to adapt to teaching within the, the height of the pandemic yes. and online courses, yes. and now things have been shifting opening up and adapting to, you know, to teaching a little bit differently than, than, yes. than we had before, holding courses a little bit differently. Yes. Everyone has just adapted so well and done so, so great too. here and has worked very, very well together. I think so too. I was just talking to a faculty member yesterday that was talking about how part of the uh, um, adaptation they've had to make is they've created synchronous online classes. And so it's an online class, but it has synchronous sessions weekly. So the students are still getting the experience of being with their instructor mm -hmm. um, because they have sessions via Zoom each week, right? So there's synchronous instruction that's now happening. There's high flex instruction that is happening and will continue to happen as we move forward. High flex is a class that is a face-to-face -face class but the instructor includes online instruction as part of it during that class session. They have a camera set up. They interact with students that may be at a distance. So students have the option then in a high flex environment, the student has an option of either coming to the classroom or they can attend class at a distance. And so I think we're seeing all of that was available pre-pandemic, mm -hmm. but the pandemic kind of forced us to try out new ways, new modalities for delivery. And at DACC, 
our faculty uh, embraced it and ran with it. Yeah. And so now they're doing cutting edge work around um, instruction in multiple modalities. And so coming out as we're not even coming out, as we're living through the pandemic, as we're learning who to be now as a college, creating who to be as a college, we want to continue to be on the cutting edge of what it, it means to deliver instruction and services in multiple modalities, because we're yeah. already becoming very, we're already highly proficient, and now how do we take it to the next level of excellence, I say. And that trickles down to just the average student. I mean, there are some mm -hmm. students here that are first generation college That's students. Right. Um, they they live alone, they live with roommates, yeah. we have single parents. And yeah. so when you think about those, that you know may have a little bit of obstacles in their way and well my car broke down today and i can't mm -hmm. make it to class or um my child is homesick and mm -hmm. i cannot find anybody just having those options is just absolutely wonderful and it helps the student in so many ways yeah so that they can still continue uh taking their courses and, and being in class without yeah. having to physically be in class. That's correct. And so we already know how to do that. We're already doing that as an institution. Yeah. Uh, the question is now, how do we in, uh, increase like our face-to-face -face offerings for those students that need it, mm -hmm. but still use technology in a way that helps support the individual learners as they need it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and an option like a high flex course can really help make a difference for students. Um, some students in a way that just traditional or just online won't. Yeah, yeah. that is that is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so did we get through all the goals that we had? I think we yeah, had one more. I think more. there was did, one more. We might have touched on it. <laughs> Here, yeah, we may have covered it. So the third goal, I think, is working with the deans, associate vice presidents, faculty, and staff members in my area to define and create processes and policies that aid in our core function of delivering instruction and services in multiple modalities. So I think we kind of covered it. We right? did. So like it's all about us really focusing in and identifying those policies and processes where we can improve on because instruction is about continuous quality improvement, right? That's part of the nature of who we are is that we're, we are in a conversation about who do we need to be moving forward and how do we do that in a quality and innovative way. And so I think it's about identifying those those things in the background that students may not see, um, but that make a difference for students along the way. So I think those are the three areas that I can see that we're focusing on based mm -hmm. on the DACC strategic plan and leads 20, I think it's leads 2025. So, and then, you know, we did talk a little bit um, of how the office helps support the, 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 the average student. Yes. Were there any other things that you could think of that we wanted to talk about? And so, yeah. you know, people watching here, they're, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think the thing to recognize when it comes to academic affairs is that academic affairs touches, um, touches the academic experience, the experience of all students, every single one at DACC. <laughs> Um, we offer the classes that students need in order to complete their degrees and certificates. We offer the degree plans. We offer guided pathways, like for our high school students. Um, we impact those non-credit students um, with the, uh, by offering their trainings and offering the courses that they need as well. And so um, I, really, I really believe that when it comes to the student population, academic affairs on every level is part of the experience of students, um, whether it's the in, in the class that they're taking or even outside of the class that they're taking by providing them with advisors, with tutors, with um, all of uh, library services, love library services. Um, oh, yeah. Library services, love the tutors, love all of y'all, um, <laughs> because you make a difference for them providing those wraparound services that actually get the students done. Because remember, um, for a lot of students, it's not enough that they come to college. Their lives can be changed just by attending one class but it's in the graduation, it's in the completion, it's them completing a certificate, 
it's graduating, it's transferring over to the university, us uh, supporting them along the way to get to whatever their goals are, their academic goals are. Um, I think that's what's vital and critical and why academic affairs are so important to what we do here at DACC. Absolutely. So yeah, I think we covered such a great um, area of, of mm -hmm. the office and the role and, and mm -hmm. um, welcoming you here to mm -hmm. DACC. Um, do we have anything else to add? Is there anything that I didn't cover? <laughs> no, I think that we covered all of it. Since we are increasing the numbers of face-to-face -face classes in the fall, I'm hoping that I'll get a chance to see a lot of you around campus. Please, if you see me on any of the campuses, today we're on Espina campus. I have um, My main office is over in the uh, East Mesa campus, but um, you can see me on various campuses. I'll be in the South at the South Centers um, next week. And so if you see me around campus now that we're all back, please come over and say hi. Remember, I'm new, and it'd be nice to meet as many of you um, in person as possible. But I thank you so much for having me on today. Thank you. Dr. Woodley, thank you so much. We really <laughs> appreciate it and the wealth of information that you have given us and how you're supporting us and um, just how friendly and approachable you are. It's, it's you know... People seem to have this uh, this idea of that, you know, the VPs, you wear your suits and, yes. and, and you sit behind. No, you, you are a, just an average person that is out there helping to make school and college a much more pleasurable experience for every student out there. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think it's because I'm, I'm 1G, right? I'm first generation. I, I call it 1G. <laughs> So I'm, I'm first generation, I'm 1G, and I know how important it is in order for students to feel like they can reach out to any of us. I think that when I look at the, the team of people that I work with, my colleagues that are vice president here at DACC, and I've worked at other institutions, all of us are, uh, all of the, the vice presidents are really open mm -hmm. and accessible to students and staff, and they're down to earth. I think a lot of that comes from our president, who's very down to earth, and she's mm -hmm. good people. Um, I think the vice presidents and the staff here are good people. And so when you find good people, it allows you to be authentic and genuine. And so I appreciate you. Thank you so much. You've been one of the people that has been really warm and welcoming to me. So thank you. I appreciate it.